So you've collected stuff. You've gotten everything out of your head. You've decided what to do with the things that you've written down. Now is time for the third step of the GTD, getting things done process, organizing what you have. I'm Dave Edwards. Today, we're going to look at organizing and the organizing tips suggested by getting things done and the GTD methodology. So organizing is where a lot of us get stuck because we've been so used to just piles of things. You know, we do something from this pile, we do something from this pile, and that's pretty much our organization system. So intuitively, we know that we need better structure around these kinds of things. And the GTD methodology suggests that we need to have lists and we need to have structure behind all of those items. So again, let me explain that organizing is part of the GTD system and then give you some tips on how I organize my stuff. Now, remember, if you have an item that's just really simple that you come across, we'll just do them. I mean, if you can do it in two minutes, don't bother to write it down. It's not worth putting it into your system. Just going to clutter things up. Uh, that could be something like uh, order more printer ink or just change that light bulb. Just, just do it. Everything goes somewhere. So if it's simple, do it really quick. Now, one of the most important items of the GTD system is your project list. The GTD methodology describes a project as, that will take more than one action to complete. The idea is that this list of projects resides on one list. Another list contains the next actions. What do you have to do next to get to work on those projects? Now, you can keep these lists on paper, on your computer, maybe a spreadsheet. If you want more functions, you can use an app like Nirvana, Evernote, uh, Todoist, Obsidian. I mean, there are lots of them. You might want to try a couple of these out before deciding on what you're going to use. Now, here is an important point. You don't want to jump around between apps. It's okay to try them, but then you have to make a decision. Here's why. Um, I mean, there's so many apps that you can try, and they all seem better than the other. Some have more features than others. Some features you need, some you may not. So try them out. The, what I always like to recommend is take an app that you know, you're interested in trying out, uh, downloading it, putting in like the tasks that you're going to work on for the week and see how that works for an entire week. All the tagging, all of the reminders, see how those functions play out. Then the next week, if you want to try another app, okay, fine, download it. Put the tasks that you're going to work on that week into that app. And then after a while, you'll see which one is better than other. And then you've got to choose. See, because if you are continually migrating between apps, it takes a lot of brain power to do that. And, you know, if you put something in this task manager and you forget to do it in this task manager, I mean, you won't be very efficient. You will start to lose track of things that you have to do. So ultimately, you are going to have to pick one task manager. Now, another thing that GTD recommends is that you tag each task with a context that is where or what you will need to complete the task. So tasks could be tagged with something like at office, at phone, at computer, at internet. So for example, um, if one of my tasks is to weed the flower garden, well, I would task it with at home. Obviously, I can't do that when I'm at the office. If there is an item that requires me to call my financial planner, well, I'll tag that with at phone. I need a phone in order to complete that action. Uh, at internet may sound simple, but if you fly a lot, if you're in an airplane, there are certain tasks you can't do unless you have a solid internet connection. Now there is overlap, which is why, quite frankly, I pay a little bit less attention to context than some people do, although you may need to. The, the actual tags that I use are really, there's really only three of them, uh, errands, work, and home. And another list that you're going to want to compile is a list of items that you are waiting for for others to do. By having those items in one place, perhaps sorted by the individuals to whom those items have been assigned, will mean you won't forget about them and you will follow up with those people about the tasks that they owe you. Those are just some ideas for organizing the tasks and the projects 
that you face. Do you have any tips about organizing your materials? Share them with us. Post a comment below. I'm Dave Edwards. Stay productive.